Okay, now, so we look at this portion of the bank reconciliation. Remember that the balance per bank statement will be the cash balance that you have as recorded by the bank. So that's the record of your deposit account. And sometimes there are instances wherein you uh, deposited past the banking hours or let's say you deposited the check and that would still have to go through the check clearing so they would be considered as deposit in transit deposits in transit so what happens here is in your record you already know that you received that cash so you have the the increase in cash here as per your record and then you deposit it in the bank but the thing is when they made the bank statement it didn't make it to the cutoff so the bank statement here does not reflect yet the ba the amount of cash that you deposited the day before so because of that you have to add deposit in transit and then you can also add the errors made the, by the bank if you notice that there were some mistakes made and then for outstanding checks the assumption here is that you are the one issuing the check or you are the payor so what happened was in your own in your own book you already recorded that you paid someone so there was already a decrease in cash but that payor did not go yet to the bank so your ba branch of account or the bank you're banking with doesn't know that it should deduct a certain amount from your deposit account. And so here, at this point, this could be, this would be greater than what you have. So to adjust that, you have to subtract outstanding checks from the bank statement balance. And then if there are errors, you can subtract that as well. And after the adjustments, you get a total and hopefully, and, and it actually not just hopefully this value should be equal to the value that you obtained from your adjustments as per your own books so in summary if you're getting confused the bank reconciliation mantra should be put it where it isn't if you haven't recorded yet the interest that you earned in the bank so you put it as an addition to your cash balance. If, for example, the bank hasn't recorded the check that you issued to pay your payee, then you should make adjustments to the balance of the bank. So in class, we'll be trying some exercises in Hopefully, this will become clear as we go through the lesson. Now, let me just move to the next slides. We'll fast forward to slide 36. Now, this discusses the adjusting entries pertaining to bank reconciliation. So, take note that we do not make adjusting entries to correct the bank balance. The bank will take care of its own errors. And its own mistakes what we will make adjusting entries for would be the adjustments as per book balance so just to show you the diagram okay we will look at the adjustments that we made here on this right portion so for example for collections made by the bank we don't know that the person who borrowed money from us already paid us let's say deposited in our bank account so we, we only get notified when we see the bank statement so what happens here upon knowing that we make adjustments so there is an increase in cash in your own record okay. and then there will be a decrease in accounts receivable or notes receivable depending on your agreement and if, for example, you charged interest, then you will also have interest revenue in line with this. 
Now for the bank service charges, that will decrease your cash balance. So what's good about bank reconciliation adjusting entries? You at least know that it's either a plus or minus in your cash balance. So obviously bank service charges would be would decrease your cash. So we put cash on the credit side. And we charge that to miscellaneous expense. So that's a debit to miscellaneous expense. Now for NSF or return checks, again, this is a minus to our book balance. So we know that we are crediting cash. And then we reestablish our accounts receivable because we need to collect from our payers. So that's a debit to accounts receivable. And then let's say for errors, let's say payment of 300 pesos of utilities was recorded at 400. So let's say your initial entry was utilities expense of 400 and then your crediting cash amounting to 400. So the error here is your utilities was um, supposed to be just 300 pesos but you recorded it at recorded it at 400 so what we need to do is to we need to decrease this by 100 so that it becomes 300 so adjusting entry would be credit utilities expense of 100 to make it 300 and then for cash we debit cash mounting to 100 because here in the initial entry we took out too much cash so to bring back 100 we debit it and therefore it means that our total cash out will just be 300 so the adjusting entry will be debit cash 100 and then credit utilities expense 100 now for the for this this type of error there is a an increase in cash so in our adjustments to the book balance we add to the initial book balance. So that will fall somewhere here. That would be the type of error that would be added to the initial value of the balance per books. Now, here's another example of an error. This is the last slide on slide 39. Okay. For So the example is payment of 300 for utilities was recorded at 200. So what happened here, the real value that was supposed to be paid for utilities was 300, but they only recorded 200. So that would look like this in the journal entry. Now how do we fix this? First, we need to increase utilities expense by 100 so that it will total to 300. So the adjusting entry is utilities expense 100 pesos. And then for cash, we only cash out, as per record, 200 here, but it should be 300. So we further decrease cash by 100 by crediting it. And so this would be the adjusting entry as per bank reconciliation. Now we notice here that since we credited cash, then there is a deduction in cash, meaning when we adjust the bank reconciliation or when we perform the bank reconciliation, this portion here okay, will be actually this fall under this portion, less errors made in the book. So initially, we have a, um, a cash balance here, but upon discovering the error, then we decrease cash, so we subtract cash. And then after considering all the adjustments, we get the total adjusted cash balance. Again, hopefully that would be the same amount as the total bank adjusted cash balance for the bank. And that's it. That's bank reconciliation. So I'll see you in class. Bye.